uh, okay, I would like to welcome you all here in this course, which is a durability evaluation and repairs of concrete structure. Uh, the course is very important for those who are uh, concerned or who, are, who has interest in the concrete. So uh, my name is Ahmed Al Sadoun. I'm a civil engineering lecturer. So I'm going to present uh, this lecture here. So today we'll just we'll start with introduction to, to the durability of concrete. So first we need to know what the benefit of that course or this course intend to. The first one we need to provide an understanding of how concrete element in structure deteriorate. Uh, the, the second purpose of the course, we need to know what what must be done to protect uh, to protect the structures from an uh, unacceptably rapid deterioration. And the last purpose of the course, we need to know how existing durability problems can be identified and rectified. So basically, first we need to know how the concrete elements going to degrade. Then we need to know what must be done to provide some kind of repair or how we are going to stop the uh, deterioration. And the last purpose uh, of the course, we need to know how we know the problems and we need to know how to uh, fix the problem. So again, basically the first uh, part, we'll talk about the durability of the concrete, then we'll move, about, we'll move to the evaluation of the concrete structure and the last thing is to uh, know how to prepare the concrete structure. So it's very important course. It concludes many things here. The durability of the concrete, the evaluation of the concrete, and the repair of the concrete. So before we start, I need to provide you with the uh, introduction because some of you may forget about the uh, concrete. So to have a solid background, we need to have introduction. So we know that concrete is basically have four components. We need to have water, air, uh, we need to have cement, we need to have fine aggregate, we need to have coarse aggregate. If we have the four basics elements, that means I have a concrete. Also, I, ha I may have admixtures, like the chemical admixtures, superplasticizer, we use the superplasticizer in order to enhance the workability of the concrete, or sometimes we need, we use mineral admixtures. We know that mineral admixtures, like the fly ash, silica fume, uh, mainly they are pie products, and it should be discarded. So, uh, instead of this, the, 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 this charge, charging or discharging the, the, the fly ash and the silica fume, instead of that, we will use them as a replacement for the concrete. Okay, we'll use them as a replacement for the concrete. Uh, because the uh, mineral admixture, they has the cementitious properties. Okay, so if you are going to make concretes, we have four purposes or four goals for making concrete. The first goal is workability. Of course, uh, if you have low workability, that means the casting and replacing of the concrete is going to be very difficult. Uh, so we, you need to come up with a workable concrete. Also, the strength itself is very important. We know that the, uh, the strength is going to be specified by the structure engineer. So, for example, as a structure engineer, he won the strength of foundation for 40 megapascal. So we need to achieve this value. If you fail to do so, uh, of course, if you are working with a contractor, uh, either to destroy the uh, foundation or you need to pay fines. Also, the durability. You, 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 just, you, you are not only making concrete with uh, good workability and good strength. Also, the concrete should last for a very long time. Okay. Uh, and the last, three, the last goal is the economy. Of course, we will not come up with uh, concrete which is very expensive. We are going to produce as concrete as cheap as possible. Um, if, we, if we combine the cement with the water, we will have the paste. If we combine cement, water, and aggregate, we will have something called mortar. And if we combine cement, water, fine aggregate, and coarse aggregate, we will come up with concrete. Uh, the paste represents about 25%, 40%. We 
while the aggregate represents about 6% to 75%. Uh, also, we have condition on the water. If the water is drinkable, that means it can be used uh, for making concrete without any qu questions. If you have questionable water, that means the water is not drinkable. That means you need to meet some kind of criteria. For example, the compressive strength for questionable water should be more than 90% compared with the uh, standard concrete. Also, we have many types for the cement. So we have uh, four uh, or five basic types for cement. We have the normal one. Uh, you will use the normal cement if you if we don't have any special conditions we use uh, type uh, number two the moderate sulfate attack if you have uh, uh, low or moderate uh, concentration of the sulfate ions we use uh, type number three high L strings if you need to uh, have the strings as quickly as possible or you need to uh, release the forms or take out the form as soon as possible also we have type number four which is the low heat of hydration the low heat of hydration if you have a, a big mass of concrete like if you are going to cast a dam so in that case because you have a large mass of concrete the heat is going to be very high and if you have uh, something like that uh, thermal cracking may take place so take uh, please take care uh, on that point also if you have a high sulfate ions you are expecting the concrete to be attacked by high sulfate ions in that case you need to use type number five here here in Saudi Arabia we use type one and type five also we need to take care of the uh, quality of the cements so we have the finest we have the setting time, we have the strength, and we have the soundness. Of course, the setting time is very important. Uh, remember, we used to define the setting time by the initial setting time and the final setting time. So the, set, the initial setting time may be between two hours to three hours. So w before the initial setting time, you should finish the delivering uh, of the concrete. You should finish the casting. You should finish the compaction of the concrete before the initial setting of time because after the initial setting of the time dealing with the concrete is going to be very difficult okay so also uh, one of the basic gradients of the concrete is the fine aggregate we define the fine aggregate by uh, the size if the size is less than 4.75 millimeter then we will call this fine aggregate so example for that we have the sand from the pit river lake seabed etc and also we have the crushed powder of stone brick and slag and also we have the coarse aggregate we define the coarse aggregate by the size again if the size is more than 4.5 millimeter or equal then we will define the uh, aggregate uh, and we will call it coarse aggregate or the natural we have the natural aggregate we have the crushed quarry rock this one a picture for natural aggregate and this one a picture for uh, crushed stone also we talk about the chemical admixtures and we talk about the mineral admixtures so the, the chemical admixture is very important uh, example for chemical admixture we have the air in train when the concrete is exposed to freezing and doing conditions we need to use air in trains this one it, it will provide the spaces for the concrete to, to freeze and zoo uh, because we know that when um, if you have a uh, water inside the, the pores of the concrete when that water exposed to freezing condition the the volume it will going to be larger which will cause the side stresses so in order to avoid that problem we need to use air in trainer also we have water reducers is very famous uh, the most famous one is super plasticizer we use this one in order to enhance the workability and also if you want to come up with uh, high strength concrete we, you need to uh, to add water reducing agents also, we have the retarders. We used to retarders to delay the initial set of concrete. Sometimes um, you may have uh, problems inside the concrete delay in delivering the concrete to the uh, job site. So you may use the retarders. Also, if you have a special kind of finishing, you need to delay the initial time. We say, we we do that mainly because the um, if the concrete past the initial time, it's difficult to to cast it, place it, and deal with it. 
and also we have the hydration control this one is the same like the retarders but but this one is stop the hydration process completely so the concrete will stay for maybe up to three days and finally the accelerators uh, the accelerators is opposite to retarders in case of accelerators i need to develop uh, the strings at higher rate which means that I need to uh, lose the, or take off the forms as quickly as possible, or I need to gain the strings uh, in uh, in short time. So I'm going to use accelerators. The mineral admixtures like the fly ash, silk fume, the blast furnace slack, like I, like I previously mentioned, those uh, mineral admixtures uh, is byproduct, which means that uh, we are going to discard them. So instead of discard them, will put them as a replacement for a part of the cement because they has uh, cementitious properties also nowadays no one is making concrete uh, manually uh, most of the concrete is going to be de delivered from ready mixed concrete and here we have a picture for the ready mixed concrete here we have the central mixer uh, here we have the aggregates, uh, coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Here we have the cements, and here we have a tank of water. Here we have admixtures, chemical admixtures. Then here we have the uh, control room where we can control the amounts of all of this together. Then the concrete is going to be uh, driven into trucks, and the trucks will drive the concrete to the job site. Uh, now, when we uh, deliver or we when we receive the concrete on the job site, uh, we need the space. The space here it should be as close as possible. Like you see here, when you deliver the concrete, the, the, the try to reduce that distance here. Uh, we do this because we don't. We need to avoid the segregation. Segregation means that the separation of the uh, paste and the uh, aggregate. So we don't need problem like that. Uh, also, we need after we cast the concrete, we need to make uh, consolidate, consolidation or compaction, which means that we are going to uh, reduce the, uh, the, 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 the air inside the concretes. Because if we fail to do so, then uh, something called honeycombs will take place. Honeycombs, uh, that means I have a large voids void inside my concrete. And, I feel, and if I have a large void, uh, first of all, first of all, I will lose the uh, part of the cross section, and uh, more dangerously, uh, that will allow the ingress of uh, chemicals to get inside the uh, concrete. Uh, as a result, may I have a corrosion for my uh, bars, steel bars. Uh, so I need to avoid this. And uh, nowadays, honeycombs take place a lot. Also, I need to finish the concrete in a proper way uh, because that will help me uh, in the finishing uh, process also the curing is very important we have many types of curing we have the fogging we have the sp sprinkling we have the sheet covering we have the liquid membranes forming so why we do curing um, we know that the hydration process takes uh, a long time to, do, to, to, to be complete uh, the hydration process is the reaction between the water and the cements and in order uh, to, 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 to continue the hydration process, I need to maintain uh, a moisture content and temperature, a certain moisture content and temperature for, for, for uh, um, a definite period of time. That will increase the uh, strength and also it will uh, uh, help us to avoid uh, the plastic shrinkage. Uh, also, we talk about the workability. If you have something like that, that means the workability is low. If you have something like that, that, that means you have higher uh, workability. And of course, the, the workers in the, in the workplace, they need to, to deal with higher slump. They need to deal with higher workability. Uh, also, we need to avoid segregation. We have dry segregation. That means separation of paste and aggregate. And we have the bleeding. That means the uh, separation of water from consolidated concrete. And we know that bleeding is not good because if you, with the bleeding, if you have uh, high wind and, uh, and, 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 and you have high temperature, you will have uh, plastic shrinkage. Uh, also, after the concrete became hardened, I need to, uh, to check the strings. 
I have the compressive strength, I have the fracture strings, and also I have the compressive strings using the rebound hammer, uh, which is non-destructive test, which means that I, I will not destroy a part of concrete to know the, its strength. Uh, unfortunately, the rebound uh, hammer test is not accurate, not like the compressive strings test, but sometimes uh, I need to test the concrete inside the, uh, inside the existing building. So in case like this, it's we we prefer to perform rebound hammer test. Also, we need to know the uh, effect of the water cement ratio, and we need to, to know the effect of edge on on concrete. Uh, as you can see in this uh, picture here, I have two lines, which means that I have a range here. So as the water cement ratio increase, what will happen to the compressive strengths? It will decrease. Okay. So when I decrease the, the, the value of the water cement ratio, in return, the compressive strength, it will increase. Uh, also, we need to know the effect of the edge on the strength. Uh, here we have four lines. Line number one, we have a concrete, which is was uh, in air entire time. Uh, the green one here, it was uh, cured for seven days. Uh, the remaining time, it was put in the air. The red one, it was cured for 28 days, and the, the, in the rest of the time, it was put in the air. The blue line here, it was put, uh, it was cured for entire time. And we can see that even though the yellow line here, uh, it was uh, put uh, in the air entire time, it's again uh, strings with the uh, with the edge, which means that even though, even if you don't have curing. The concrete it will still gain strength okay and you can see here uh, normally we are going to do the curing process for uh, 20, uh, 28 days because after 28 days it's not practical to continue on the curing process okay so again we'll come to definition of the durability when we say durability it's mean the ability of the concrete to resist weathering action chemical attacks or operation or any other process of deterioration that means the ability of concrete to uh, resist all kind of uh, degradation we we'll call this durability if i have durable concrete that means that concrete has the ability to resist the uh, weathering if action chemical attacks on operation or any kind of uh, deterioration we have many factors that causing the concrete deterioration. We have the temperature, humidity, chloride penetration. We have the carburation. We have the phasing and the wind. And many of the problems that we are going to face, uh, like reinforced corrosion, sulfate attack, acid attack, efflorescence, seawater attack, acid silica reaction, abrasion, erosion, cavitation. We have the forest action, and we have high temperature and fire problems. So as you can see here, we have the reinforcement corrosion. Uh, we see the effect of the uh, reinforcement corrosion. Uh, also, here we can see the effect of alkali silic reaction. Here we can see the effect of the sulfate attack. Here we can see the effect of alkali silic reaction again. And here we can see the effect of the fluorescence. Here we can see the effect of acid attack. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, next time, uh, next lecture, we are going to pick up from here. Thank you for attending. Attention.